Hello guys and welcome to another video with Cass on the Mezuma channel. So today I'm in here to show you the combination lock system of my dreams. So combination lock systems are nothing new in Minecraft, but I believe I will, by the end of this video I might convince you that this, this system that I came up with is pretty amazing with all the features that it has. Yeah, let's start as always with those systems by try to, trying to spam click this thing to prove that you can't just enter any code in here in hopes to break the system. It doesn't work. <laughs> you have to know the correct password. So the person who tries to go in here doesn't even, uh, won't even know uh, how many digits are necessary for the password. Is it three digits, five digits, 20 digits? The system accommodates for an infinite number of digits if Minecraft was infinite. <laughs> okay, so let's try the correct password, of course. So I added some, um, some sound confirmations in here. You have also the lamp confirmation, but I, I just added the sounds to show you guys that it's possible. So we have the correct password, the lamp turns on, and a door opens to your new amazing base. As with many of the combination lock systems made in the past in Minecraft, if you just hit any key now, it will basically invalidate the password. So the door will close and the system will know that the password is invalid and it's all reset. Another very interesting feature of the system uh, is that it's reprogrammable, uh, which means I can change my password at any time, uh, if as long as I know the correct password that I had before. So let's do that. So let's start by inputting our password, which is kind of uh, an inverted S shape, so integral shape. Okay, so now the system is telling us that the password is correct once again. So to do reprogramming, all I need to do is to press this key. So let's do that. Okay, so as you can see now, uh, it tells us that there's no valid password and this lamp turns on showing you that we are in programming mode. So uh, whatever next five symbols that we type in are going to be our new password. Okay, so let's uh, input a new password. I want the password to be this and then I want this key to repeat in a sequence. Then I want to press this key once again. So I typed in four symbols and I don't want to give you the impression that this key is here exclusively for reprogramming your password. This, this is a regular key as well and can be used in your password. As a matter of fact, I will just press it and now it's going to be part of our new password. The programming mode has been turned off. We have our new password in the system and it's telling us that it's a valid password. So let's just press any key. All right, so now let's try to input our new password just to do the complete demonstration. So it starts in the middle and two down. Then this one also repeats. And then we have this key. So let's see. And now, as you can see, uh, we have the correct password. And despite me pressing this key at the last moment, we haven't entered the, the programming mode. Uh, if I want to enter the programming mode, I will have to enter this key again, so it's safe to use it. All right, guys, and this is the entire redstone running behind this thing. The system you see here is capable of reading a panel with 10 different, different digits, storing a password and comparing wherever you will type with the password. The password is order sensitive as expected. Uh, it can have repeated numbers. It doesn't produce any sound unless you include note blocks to do that on purpose. And uh, it doesn't use any pistons. And considering that, it's still one of the most compact systems of this kind ever made in Minecraft. Let me do a quick description of all the subsystems that we have in here. So the blue circuit contains the stored password. The brown circuit lets you enter the programming mode. The science circuit records everything you type. The slightly messy red circuit compares the stored password with whatever you type. And the green circuit maps whatever you do to the internal logic. The blue circuit and the science circuit are the exact same and they are the core of everything that you see in here. And uh, I call it the silent solid state signal strength shift register, <laughs> which is a long name for uh, a memory that shifts its contents whenever new data is available. So I will start explaining this from the input panel, which is by the way, completely independent 
to this memory in here. So I expanded it up to five, so it supports five digits. Uh, but because of these repeaters in here, this can be actually expanded to whatever you want. So you could have a password with 20, 20 different symbols or whatever you want. And this means that this panel, uh, which, is, which could be a little bit intimidating for some people with 10 different dig digits could achieve, could be, uh, could, could be replaced by a simple panel like this. A simple two by two panel like this uh, could be good for a password with 16 uh, 16 symbols, not necessarily different. So I would go like uh, a sequence like this, followed by a sequence like this, and then a cross like this. And then I want to repeat the cross, and then this once again, invert the cross, and then do a cycle through all the buttons. And this would be one password. So even though you have a small panel, it doesn't mean that the password is not super strong with this system. Uh, and when also when you see a big panel like this with 10 digits, it's usually a mess with wires going everywhere. Basically 10 different signals trying to get to the, <laughs> to the logical section of your system, but not with this one because this one is based on signal strength. So basically a signal starts traveling from down here uh, and it goes uh, all the way up and the output is this block actually. We have some extra comparators here for delay. And this is because we have to do two things with this super amazing shift register uh, that I created recently. We have to give it the signal strength that we want to be stored in here. And it, there's a secondary line here that pulses the memory and, that, and you can see that it, it has uh, two sections in here, so two branches in here. So it can store things in the blue circuit as well as in the sine circuit. And it has to clock the circuit. So basically every time we have, with you, 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 you click on a button, uh, it gets rid of the, the oldest piece of information and then makes room for the next piece of information which is going to be stored in here. Everything in between will be shifted to the side. So what the signal strength shift registers are trying to do is basically this. Information gets in and it's going to slowly be shifting to the right and when they get completely aligned then the comparison will say that those are the same. Uh, in this case for the red circuit to work I actually have to slightly change this thing in here. So when I'm storing a password I actually store, store the numbers uh, a little bit different. So a 1 would be stored as a 0, a 2 as a 1, a 3 as a 2, and so on. So that when we subtract one from the other, we know for sure that uh, that there's a difference of 1 if the password is correct. Any other difference, if it's 0 because uh, the number is too big, or if it's more than 1, then we know that the password's incorrect. So this is a very easy and compact way of doing that. I actually achieved this. I, I have shown this before, but I actually achieved this because when I do the subtraction here, if the subtraction is one, this piece of signal strength will be powered and only this piece. So this will turn off if it's, uh, and this torch of course will turn off because there is signal strength in here. But if the subtraction is too strong, well then this is going to be zero, but then the torch is going to turn on. So only if signal strength is one means it's correct. As you can see, when the password is correct, this entire line turns off. As mentioned before, the green circuit will clock the memory devices into accepting new data. Uh, this can't happen down here because this comparator is being blocked by this uh, repeater in here. The brown circuit uh, job, the brown circuit's job, is to clear the blue memory so that, as a consequence, this repeater gets some power and the blue circuit can finally get new data being input. So the brown circuit will do this under two circumstances. First, the password has to be correct. And we know that this is happen, happening because we have this lamp turned on in here. And also we have to press this key. And the difference with all the other keys is that they all, uh, whatever symbol they are trying to output here is a signal strength level uh, less than 15. So when we have a signal strength level of more than 15, uh, as you can see, we are uh, in the input area in here. And there is a max level here being compared to this comparator. So a level 15 will be able to turn off this torch. And those two torches work as an AND gate because it's, it's an AND logical circumstance. So password is correct. So first torch is off. Once you 
press the key that gives away that gives off the, a level a signal strength level of 15. This torch also uh, gets turned off, and then under the, these two conditions, this is going to be able to clear the entire memory for you. And then this other line will notify you that you are now able to record uh, anything that you input, not only to this cyan memory on top here, but also to this second piece of memory, the blue one. I made this system in Minecraft 1.12 using only solid state components, so it should be able to work in pretty much any system. Um, but I'm not sure, we, we, can, we can never be sure with Minecraft, you know. Uh, but I will not do a tutorial for this, but of course we will leave a map download in case you guys want to analyze the circuits. Um, on the other side, I will do a tutorial for the science circuit, which is the core of this, because this circuit allows you to do a lot of really interesting things uh, in Minecraft, since you can use signal strength in here instead of binary, which is what takes up a lot of, lot of space and it's not always the best option. I'm not saying that binar binary is bad, it's just not the best option for all the projects that you want to do. But other than that guys, I think, I think this is it for the system, so hope that you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Bye! Mm -hmm.